All right, in this video, I want to talk about uh, composition of functions that are given by formulas. Okay, now let's suppose that I've got some function here, uh, and uh, little f here represents the rule or formula for the function here. Okay, so I'm going to write y equals little f of x. Okay, all right. Now, you remember a function can be considered this way as a kind of a transformation machine where it does the following. It takes x, okay, and x drops into the little machine called f, and what pops out is the uh, function f of x, okay? So this is the transformed value. Alrighty? Alright, so we think of that as sort of a little machine here. Okay? Now, here's the rule for uh, this first example here. Suppose that y equals f of x is x squared plus 1. Now, descriptively, this would be saying whatever value I drop into f, whatever the x value is, I drop in there, what pops out is the square of x plus 1. Now, when you do this, by the way, when you're thinking of a function, for example, remember we could also think of functions as relations and sets of ordered pairs, um, the variable in which it is defined is not really very important, okay? It doesn't really define the function. The function is really defined uh, by uh, how it transforms whatever you put into it. So if I went f of z is z squared plus 1, there I've defined it in terms of a separate independent variable instead of x, it's z. But in essence, it's still the same function. I hope that makes sense, right? And this particular function, we'll describe it this way then, independent of the variable. It takes whatever you put into it, squares it, and then it adds one to the result. Okay, so for example, if I was going to compute uh, f of 2 for this particular function, uh, I claim I get 5 in the following way. 2 drops into the function, all right, and what pops out is the square of 2 plus 1, which is 5. Okay, all righty, I hope that makes sense. All right, suppose that I have a second function, uh, y equals g of x is the reciprocal function, okay? What would the domain of that function be, by the way? Now, we're just going to be focusing on real numbers here. Okay, it would be the set of all real numbers except for 0, right? You can't go 1 over 0, okay? So all real numbers except 0 would be the domain, or the what we were calling the implicit or natural domain of g, okay? Anyways, let's find uh, g of 5, okay? So if 5 was to drop in to g here, okay, you'd be looking at g of 5, which is what? The reciprocal of 5, so that's 1 fifth decimals. It would be 2 tenths or 0 0.2, okay? All righty. I hope that all makes sense here, okay? Now, in this particular example, notice that I actually used 5 here, okay? And 5 was that value that came out here. So I want you to sort of notice something here. I could consider that final value 1 fifth in the following way as a composition of functions. You guys remember, notice when 2 dropped into f, 5 popped out, okay? And then I imagine what? 5 dropping into g, and then 1 fifth popping out, okay? This is an example of where if you connect up two of these function machines here, like this, this is what we would call what? A composition of function. Okay? So a composition of functions here. Okay? F of 2 was 5. Okay? G of 5 was 1 fifth. So we could say G of F of 2 is 1 fifth. Right? This would be a true statement here. Now, instead of writing it like this, sometimes people write it this way. It's a little composition symbol. See that little open O? Okay? That little open uh, open dot there between the two, that's composition. Okay? So this would be G, G of F of 2 equals 1 fifth. Okay? So read, it's read this way. G of F of 2 equals 1 fifth or G composed with F of 2 equals 1 fifth. Okay? Either of these would be a valid way of reading it, okay? And so you should get used to both of those ways of saying this because you never know what somebody's going to say.
Okay, in general, g composed with f of x is just g of f of x. Okay, so this is uh, the meaning associated with that new symbolism. Okay, alrighty. One thing I would say here in both of these, <clears throat> if you're evaluating a composition like that, particularly when we look at it this way, you see if I give you an x value, what I'm really doing is what? I'm going to be computing f of that value of x first, and then that value, what, goes into g second, okay? Okay, so g is actually the second function that uh, you end up computing, although when you read from left to right, notice that it's g of f, so it sort of looks backwards, right? Okay, it sort of looks backwards with our notation here. All right, uh, by the way, there's just a little more terminology sometimes I like to use, okay? When you see a composition written this way, sometimes I like to call this the inner function, okay, the f. See how it's on the inside? And g is the outer function, okay? So that would be the second function you compute, but actually the first function you read when reading from left to right. Okay, so remember inner function in here, and then the outer function is the one on the outside. Okay, now for the f of x and g of x defined previously, okay, all right, so in other words, g of x is the reciprocal function and f of x is the x squared plus 1 function, okay. Well, I should say that maybe that way, but here we go. Let's go g of f of x or g composed with f of x, right, okay. So I'm going g of f of x here, so that's going to be g of x squared plus 1, since f of x is just a shorthand notation for x squared plus 1. Now what does, like I said, don't worry about uh, the variable in which g is, or any other function, is defined. Remember what g does to what you put into it. g does what to what you put into it? It takes its reciprocal, right? Okay, that's all g is doing. It takes whatever you put into it and takes its reciprocal. Okay, well what did you just drop into it? You just dropped into it x squared plus 1, so it's going to dutifully take its reciprocal, so I get 1 over x squared plus 1. So g of f of x, or g composed with f of x, is 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, now let's turn it around. Let's go f of g of x, okay? Okay, so this is literally what it means, okay? Now my inner function is g of x this time. Uh, g of x would be uh, have the formula 1 over x, right? Okay, so I'll substitute that in there. Okay, and then I'm going to take f of that. Now, f does what to what you put into it? It takes whatever you dropped into it, it squares that thing, and then adds 1. So this is one way of writing the composition. Now, it isn't a cleaned up way of writing the composition, which I'm going to do next here, but it is literally true. You see, it's 1 over x, that's our g, squared plus 1. Okay? Now, the first thing I would probably do is write this as uh, get rid of parentheses here by squaring the numerator and denominator. So I would get 1 squared, which is 1, over x squared, okay? Plus, we want a common denominator here to add these two. I will go x squared over x squared, okay? That's equivalent uh, to 1 with the denominator x squared. When I add the two, I would get 1 plus x squared over x squared, or I decided to write it in descending order in the numerator, so I wrote x squared plus 1 over x squared. Okay, now notice that these two are completely different things, okay? These are quite different, okay? So I write this. Notice that f composed with g of x is not equal to g composed with f of x, okay? These are two completely different things here, completely different functions in the end. So we say that composition is, at least generally, okay, not a commutative operation. You remember a commutative operation, it doesn't matter which order uh, you, you take the uh, two elements in your operation. For example, if you're multiplying, does it matter which order you multiply two numbers in? No. How about addition? No, it doesn't matter either. How about subtraction? 
yeah, that makes a big difference. 1 minus 7 isn't the same thing as 7 minus 1, right? Okay. All right. When we say it's not a commutative operation, this just means that the order in which we compose function usually matters. Now I'm going to write usually here because it doesn't always matter. Okay. Just uh, sometimes there are exceptions where the compositions are exactly the same, but we'll talk more about those later. Okay. In a future video, perhaps. Let's go ahead and uh, take another example here before we finish up. Suppose f of x is the squaring function. Okay, again, don't get hung up on the fact that it's defined in terms of x. It could be any variable. Uh, g of x is the square root of x. Okay, same story there. Now I'm going to go f of g of 2, or f composed with g of 2. What does that mean? f of g of 2, I have to compute g of 2 first. What is g of 2? Well, if I let x equal 2 up here in the formula, I would get the square root of 2 for g of 2, right? So I'm going f of g of 2. Now, what does f do to what you put into it? It takes whatever you put into it and squares it. So I've got what? The square root of 2, and I square it, and I end up getting 2. Okay, notice we started with our x value was 2, and our final answer was also 2. It didn't change a thing. Okay, now let's see what happens here if I, instead of uh, using 2, I use a more general x. Let's go f of g of x here. Well, that's going to be f of the square root of x, right? Now, f takes whatever you drop into it and squares it. Now, I put the square root of x in there, so it's going to take the square root of x and it's going to square it. But the square root of x squared is just plain old x, okay? Alrighty. All right, let's go ahead and go g of f of 2 and see what happens. That would be g of f of 2, g of uh, f of 2. Let's see, f of 2 was 2 squared, right? Because it would just be the square of 2, which is 4. So that's g of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So once again, we started with 2 and we ended with 2. Gosh. You notice up here in this one, we started with x, and we ended with x. Wow. So that was totally unchanged. Okay. All right. Let's try a different one. Let's go g of f of negative 3. That would be g of f of negative 3 here written this way. Uh, f of negative 3 would be negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, so that's g of 9. Uh, the square root of 9 is 3 and only 3. Oh, wait, we got to change this time. You can notice we started with x equals negative 3, but our final answer was actually 3. Okay. Alrighty. How about g of f of x? Let's try this, okay? So we're generalizing here. Okay, so that would be g of f of x. f of x is x squared, so I'm going g of x squared, which is the square root of x squared. The square root of x squared is not x. Haha, -ha. don't be fooled. It is actually the absolute value of x. And we saw that happening right here in part 4 there. Okay, all right. Uh, notice that the absolute value of negative 3, the x value we started with, is indeed 3 here. Okay, so it, it worked there. Okay, so... Uh, I almost fooled you there. A lot of students would say the square root of x squared is x, and that is not so. That's only true when x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? Okay, in the next video, we're going to do a few more compositions, and we're going to talk about uh, domains of compositions. Okay? And how those can change here. You might think about the domains involved with each of these functions here, and we will take this as an example in the next video. Okay, but I hope you understood the idea behind composing functions using formulas.